while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Gerard, you believe in the Bible, bro? Nah, why not? I'm all the see to believe type of guy. Agnostic. See to believe. You said see to believe. What you got to see to believe? Give me Isaiah 46. Okay. So you got a moment, right? I want to show you something. I want to show you how the Bible is a real book. Because a lot of our, a lot of our, you, was your, was your, how old are you? 38. Was your grandparents, your mother, were they in Christian church? Your grandparents was. So now, and this is just the question. Would you say that some of the things you've seen your grandparents do turned you away from the Bible? You see a bunch of hypocrites. So that turns you away from the Bible. But it's the people. You know, you turn away from the people, not the Bible. Because the Bible actually is very accurate. But the people that hold the Bible ain't living up to it. And that's what all of us we grew up in. Give me, is it Isaiah? It's 34 and 16. Verse. Uh, read that one. That's good. All right. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So the Bible instructs us to seek out of the book of the Lord. The book of the Lord is the Bible. It says, and read. Read. No one of these shall fail. It says, no one of these shall fail. So it, everything that's in the Bible, it's not going to fail. It's going to happen. Everything we read in the Bible, it act, the prophecies, they actually happen. And then what, what, what didn't happen yet, is coming to pass. Read. None shall want her back. You can't make any other book with the Bible. You can't make the Quran with the Bible. You can't make book, the, book of, uh, the Book of the Dead. The, what's that other one? Mormon, the Mormonism book. You can't put, ain't no other book can make with the Bible. It's no match for it. All they do is plagiarize the Bible. And, and branch off into some other religion. But can't no, no book be made with the Bible. Read. For my mouth it hath commanded. Uh huh. And his spirit it hath given them. It says, his, the Most High God said, My mouth hath commanded. So, yeah, we know many men wrote the Bible, but they were inspired by God. Because it was the Most High God that put it on, moved them to write these historical facts so we can see it today and identify who we are, most importantly. And what's gonna happen, and why we're in the conditions that we're in. Read. That's, That's it. it. Yep. Now go to Deuteronomy 28. Now, are you familiar with the Bible, Lenny? No. Nah. So, what happened? Do you know a little, you know about our history? A little bit about our history? Depends on you know. You know I don't know too much. I'm not well. How do we? Okay. How do? How did? How did the so-called black man get here to America? I'm not talking about the ones that was already here. I mean, we sold ourselves. You said we sold ourselves? We sold ourselves, put on the ship. Okay. So we came over here on slave ship. All right. So give me Deuteronomy 28, read verse 15 first. You know, the book of Deuteronomy was written by Moses to the Israelites. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken, Unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So Moses writing, he's saying, we know Moses, this book was written thousands and thousands of years ago. This book been around before any of us was born. So it says, it shall come to pass, meaning something will happen in the future to y'all, to you, you Israelites, if, read, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So if the Israelites decided to do against God's commandments, curses was going to come upon them. And what type of curses? Chapter 48. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. So the Israelites are going to serve their enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Which the Lord sent against the Israelites. Read. And what, what, what was going to happen after that? And hunger and in thirst. So in the Israelites was going to serve their enemies in hunger. What do you, what do you, who own McDonald's right here? White man. Who own Dunkin' Donuts? The white man own all this. The white man own all this. So that's right there letting you know, and this is our community. Why we don't own these things? Bring it out. I mean, 
It don't go nowhere. Cause even if we open a business, even if we open a business, we going our people still gonna go there. That's we gonna serve our enemies. Even if we open a business, the supplies we get, we gotta go to our enemies. Get it. Read. And in thirst. It says is that in hunger and in thirst. If you go in, the, if you go in this gas station and get water, what are the brands? You got Dasani, Aquafini, Ice Mountain, uh, Evian. PG, do we own any of that stuff? Because we're going to spend our money to get it. If you own a house, who you paying your water bill to? The white man I own. That's our enemy. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, uh -huh. and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in nakedness. The clothes that we got on our back. Do we own a manufacturing company that put the clothes together, that we use the, the cotton together? We don't own it, but we got to go to the mall and go to the stores and we don't own them. We may work in the stores, but we don't own these stores. We don't own nothing. Even if a brother get a, a, a clothing line, he got to buy the shirt and then get his stamp printed on it. I got a bag full of it right now. I'm trying to push my clothes right, right but, but we don't own it. So we get we got it. That's, that's, that's us serving our enemies. That's right. And this, this is in the Bible. Read. And in the want of all things. What do you gotta go if you when you have you got children? You got, you got brothers, sisters, dad, children, you got nieces and nephews. When they when their children was born, how did they get their birth certificate? How did they get their social security card? Same thing. When we if we wanna get married, where we gotta go? If we wanna get uh a house. White man own we gotta go get a loan from the white man. We serve our, we right now we are in captivity. We ain't got the chains on our neck no more, but we in captivity. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. He says he shall put a yoke of iron on thy neck. Did we ever have yokes of iron on our neck? I mean, no, nah, but metaphorically, yeah, I mean. Look at this. Oh, okay. This, this is us. If you if you if you Google yoke of iron, these images are gonna pop up with us and on. It's, we were we had yokes of iron on our neck when they brought us over here off those. When they got when we got off those slave ships. This is us. We had yokes of iron on our neck. That's right. And this is written in the Bible exactly as it happened to us. It's exactly what we're reading out of the Bible. Nothing. It ain't deferred from it. Not one way. We had yokes of iron on our neck. Read. Until he have destroyed thee. Read that whole thought. And the want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And you just said it. You said uh, before we before we said that you said something about the about us having a yoke of iron. You said you said metaphorically. Yeah, metaphorically, you said if it happened then, it's still happening now. Right. So read that. Read it again. A yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. That what you said that they on our neck, they metaphorically on our neck. It's, that's what that until he have destroyed thee means. Because we had the yokes of iron on our neck. Cause what was going on in slavery? We was we was uh, rebelling, trying to escape, all of that. So they had the yokes of iron until they broke us. Once they broke us, they broke us of our nationality. Cause we knew who we were when we came over here on those steps. We knew we were the Israelites. They broke us. They took our nation. They took our nationality. They took our heritage. They took our customs. They took everything from us. And so they broke us down. That's why we couldn't read. Why you now? Now this is the this is a very important piece of why they didn't let us read the Bible. Right. Bring it out. Because it's our book. Because it's our book. They don't want you to know your So exactly. And even the Bible that they had then they was called slave Bible. What's your name, brother? Come closer. Come closer. Yeah, slave Bible, yeah, one verse here, one verse there. So they only had, they only had it available. We only could see verses that appeared to benefit them. They controlled us. That's why they wouldn't let us read. And the few of us that did read, like Matt Turner, what happened when he when he read the real Bible? No, but before that, he led a revolt because he read the Bible and saw this is my book. This talking about me. And he led a revolt. Because he understood that he was an Israelite. This, this Bible is liberating. 
It's the book of life. When we get a hold of it, we, we get to know who we are. We, it's liberated. It set us free. Because right now the chain, we in, we in chain, we in bondage. Read that last part again. We're gonna keep going. Until he have destroyed things. So the reason that we don't have physical yokes on our neck right now is because we destroyed. We don't know that we are the Israelites. Right. We think that a lot of our people think this is a white man's book. A lot of people get, hey, oh, that's a white man's book. King James was white. No, he was black. It's a black man's book because ain't no white man going through this. That's right. You might have a white man, you might have a trailer part, but that ain't no, that ain't no comparison to what we go through in our hoods and in the ghettos. Ain't no comparison. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Read on. Read the next verse. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. So it says the Lord, the Lord will bring a nation against thee from far. That happened with us when they came to the west coast of Africa. And I think you I think you said they sold, we sold ourselves. Was that you? We actually didn't sell ourselves. We not Africans. The Africans sold us to them. And I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna show y'all that too. Read. A nation that come against you from far. Cause who was over here? Who was already on the land of America? Black people, Indians. So he says, I'm gonna bring a nation against you from far. Read. From the ends of the earth. From and Europe. From Spain. Coming over here to the Americas. Read. As swift as the eagle fly. As swift as the eagle fly. What that what that uh sign at? Give me that sign. It says as swift as the eagle fly. What y'all think that's talking about? What nations use the eagle as they symbol? Oh, the, Amer the Europeans, the American European people. American who else? What's up, my brother? Look at this sign. Look at this. When the white man was ruling over the Greece, the eagle. Rome, the eagle. Spain, the eagle. America, the eagle. So read that again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. We so said he gonna bring a nation against thee from far. Read. From one end of the earth as swift as the eagle flyeth. So it ain't no coincidence that the Bible says as swift as the eagle flyeth. Because the they because when you you know about an eagle, the eagle soar high and then it just swoop up on you and you won't even know it came. You don't even know where it came from. A lot of the animals and stuff, it just swoop because it flies so high you can't even see it. A bird is a bird of prey, and that's why Esau, the so-called white man, chose the eagle as they symbol. Every it ain't no coincidence that every nation that they ruled, when they was ruling, they had the eagle as they symbol. Right. Read it again, <clears throat> and remember, just to bring y'all to the speed, because I think y'all y'all walked up later. What we're reading right now, we're reading the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. It shows the curses that happened to the nation of Israel as a result of breaking God's commandments. And this is one of them. Read it again from top. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, uh -huh. from one end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. Uh -huh. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not, uh, not understand. So when them Spaniards came over here to the shores of America, the, the Hispanics didn't know what they were talking about. The Hispanics and the Native Indians, they were speaking Hebrew. They didn't understand Spanish. They didn't speak Spanish then. That's but right. they nation, they, they, everything was stripped from them. They came over here and took their land, took their cattle, took everything. They came to the west coast of Africa, took us, stripped us from over there, and brought us over here and put us in slavery. Went along with them, because they sent them over to Europe, and they took over their land and put them into slavery. That's right. That was, that's what you call, that's why they call themselves the conquistadors, or conquerors. They were conquering nations, but most importantly, they knew when they came over here, they knew the Israelites was over here. When they came to the west coast of Africa, they knew who they was coming to get. That's they knew right. we wasn't Africans. Read. Let me jump to 68. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So it says the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. You know about the Israelites being in Egypt? My brother, what's your name? Oh. oh, you know about the Israelites being in Egypt? Do you? So, in the, in the book, when you book, look in the book of Exodus, the, the book of the Exodus is called the book of Exodus because it's when the Israelites exited out of Egypt. 
when the Most High God delivered us out of the land of Egypt. That's what it's talking about. It says, read that again and do the right thing again. Read that. No. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the Lord said he's going to bring the Israelites into Egypt again. What is Egypt? Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So the Most High God delivered us out of Egypt. Read. Which was what? Out of the house of bondage. He delivered us out of the house of bondage. When the Israelites were in Egypt, they was in bondage. Read that in Deuteronomy 28. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So he says, now I'm going to bring you into Egypt again. If you study the history books, the Israelites never went back physically into the land of Egypt. So he says, I will bring you into Egypt or the house of bondage again. How? With ships. How do we get over here to America? On transatlantic cargo slave ship. This is the slave routes right here. What that? Give me that sign there with the ships. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the, it says, Lord shall bring you into Egypt. He's going to bring you into us into bondage again with ships. It's on the bottom of there? Yeah, yeah. So look at the bottom of there. You see how we how they had us stacked on the... Uh, oh, come look at the sign. You see how they had us... And you know, you, you're familiar with us coming over here on slave ships, right? You never heard of us coming over here on slave ships? Your folks, your, your ancestors had, your ancestors did. You heard about it, that's our history. It's our history though, right? And that's, it's, it is documented in the Bible. You ever, did you ever know that it was documented in the Bible? You did know that? So that, what does that mean? That seeing that it's documented in the Bible, what does that mean for us? But it's deeper than that did our ancestors, but what that mean for us? Because today we call ourselves black, African American, Negro. Those are no those are when you look on a map, ain't no nation called black, ain't no nation called African American. That's two that's two white men. We don't have no home That's right. Country. Right. We think we don't have no home country. Well right, we think we don't have no home country. Why? Brainwashed. They put, they, they, they ain't give us all the information, this, so we ain't look. This we ain't Bible, read the right information. And right. just, just to show you, because them slave ships is written in here, and it's it's documented in history. That shows you this Bible is a true book. That's right. This Bible is a very accurate and true book. That's right. Because we can look at our, in the history books and see this happened to us. Read. By the way thereof, I spoke so unto thee. Exactly as Moses written it in the Bible, that's how it happened. He said we was going to go on slave ships, back into bondage, right there in history. The yokes of iron, right there. Three. By the way whereof I spoke unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. You just said that. Thou shalt see it, that thou shalt see it no more again, meaning we don't know our homeland. We think we, we call ourselves African American. We don't know, most of us don't know our history beyond slavery. A lot of us, we don't know that we ruled Please, Europe. Please, what did God say? That's right. What did God say? Yes, sir, what did God say? Read that again. What did God say? We, we don't understand that, we, a lot of us don't know that we actually ruled in Europe during what they call the Dark Ages. And what they teach us, in, what they taught us in the history books in school was that the Dark Ages was called the Dark Ages because it was a gloomy and dark time. No, it was called the Dark Ages because we was ruling. Yeah, we was ruling. Three. And, and by the way whereof I spoke unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning we wouldn't see our homeland again. That's why we don't know what we, we don't know that we are the Israelites. We don't know that, that Israel is our land. That's where we from. Three. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. What happened when we got off the slave ship? What happened when we got off the slave ship? No, we didn't think we were free when we got off the slave ship. They put us on the auction block and started selling us like uh, at the car auction. One dollar, two dollar, sold to Master Charles in Virginia. We were sold on a slave auction block. That's what this is. That's read that again. And ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond man 
and bond woman. So we were sold as slave men and slave women. Read. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. Buy is just an old Quaker word for meaning save. No man shall save you. That's why we still here. You had Nat Turner rise up, and what happened? He got caught up, put to death. Uh, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, everything that they did, it came to nothing because the Bible is clear. There's no man that's going to save us out of the conditions that we're in. The only, the only way we will come out of this is by keeping the commandments, and when Christ come back to deliver the nation of Israel and, and bring destruction on this earth, deliver that. that's who's going to deliver us. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.